recorded. Uh, hey. That's saucy, ladies, though. Telling us it's been recorded. It's all saucy, David. Fucking Jeffries, you ho! I'm it's, right. It's being recorded. Recorded. Oh, recorded. recorded. Gathered using evidence against uh, oh. in the big trial of the Bristol she, comedians. She consensually recorded. Consensually recorded, absolutely. Um, <clears throat> often it would be good to force recording, but um, can't really do that. So, yeah, Machu Picchu. I think I took this picture, but I was definitely sat there on that little little mm. bit of it, former farmland and. Uh, it was good. It was right. Do people um, live there in Machu Picchu? No, they used to. So, a little bit of history about it. It's when the Spanish invaded Peru in South America, the, the Peruvians had like a more spiritual, I don't know if it's paganistic, but more spiritual religion. The Spanish, of course, enforced Catholicism and then right. murdered them and they didn't pray to Jesus. Religion <laughs> <laughs> uh, works. So, but they let them go into the into the forests, like or the mountains, once a year to do their own religion. They were like, "Okay, you've mm. built all our churches; you can go and do your own weird shit in the in the jungle." Yeah. Um, but they knew about this place, but the Spanish didn't. So one year they just uh. all went, and they never came back, and they smashed up all the paths, so they couldn't be followed. And then they they I guess they lived there for a long time. But about a hundred years ago, an Englishman found it. Um, and it was all overgrown, and there was just a couple of families living there. Yeah, but what, Englishman what, turned up, corrupted all the ladies of the village, and now that's... Yeah, the Spanish never found it, but they, they thought they were going to find it, so they all ran up into the... all over these mountains. They ran up yeah. into um, Brazil and all the rest of it, probably all died, Good. and uh, well. the Spanish never found it. Yeah, well, it's a Spanish Armada, a Machu Picchu, shows their shit at wars. Yeah, the Spanish Armada. Oh, there was an Armada ship in the Goonies. There was, yeah. Um, One Eyed Willy, Willy, which is which is not which is in no way, shape, or form a disgusting joke for a kids' film. Exactly. We're looking for One Eyed Willy, says a young mm-hmm. Sean Astin, who in no way was molested by Steven Spielberg. <laughs> anything like that. <laughs> Couldn't have happened. Couldn't have happened. That's where they had the guy who played. Also, got us the um, sloth. Is that his name? Sloth. Sloth. Hey, sloth would hold down. Old. Sean Austin, we're not old at the time, and then Spielberg will come in with his new script idea, rolled up, exactly. ready to go. These days, what? of course, Sloth could probably just get away with doing Instagram modelling, but we'll move on. Um... <laughs> Off chunk does a truffle shuffle in the corner. But what what was weird about the Goonies is that at the end, when the police were arresting them all, mm. they're, they're, it was the Fratelli family, it was the Fratelli crime yeah. family, right? Exactly. So they are arrested Mama, Mama Bad. And the two the two brothers, the stupid one and the nasty one, and then they're yeah. going to arrest Sloth because he's a fratelli. Yeah. Um, and then, then Chunk said, "No, no, not him. He's coming home with us, or he, yeah. he's with us." And then to, so basically, the authorities let Chunk adopt a, a small yeah. boy adopt what is essentially, you know, what I'm talking about, a slow man. <laughs> well, to be honest, with the, the state of sloth, would you be like, all right, I'm going to arrest him? If someone says, no, don't worry about it, you would be like, yeah, yeah help, yourself, help yourself. Yeah, but the, 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 where were the adoption procedures? Where were the, uh, where was the you know, risk assessments? Of... Well, it's not really adoption. <laughs> with all due respect, he's an old man. He's a, he's a fully grown man in that film. I don't think I'm not yeah, but he's, yeah, he's fully grown, but he's, you know. He, he has troubles doing his flies up. He's not way, let's face it. Yeah. Um, but... I think, well, I think... The ending, in a way, in a weird way, it's, it's a good ending for the Fratellis because they released a great album when they got out of prison. Yes, they did, yeah, yeah. Um... <laughs> 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 they did. It. <laughs> 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 it's happening. It's Sunday. There's no alcohol in my system, and uh, yeah, I'm chilling. Um... It's weird. I should be hungover today, but I'm not. I drank quite a bit last night, but I actually, I, I drank a bottle of wine last night. Did you? Yeah. I had a bottle of wine the night before, but I got really drunk the night before, and I had a hangover and I had to do a call with a friend, and I was really worried because I thought I'd be too hangover, but then I got back into the swing of it, and today I feel fine, absolutely fine, I don't know if that's a sign. That's a sign that you should carry on, yeah. and that you should, uh, you should never stop drinking for a like exactly. year. Well, the problem is I keep watching I keep watching things that make me want to drink, because like, I watched like, the, um, well, I was talking to you about a couple of weeks ago, but I watched it again, and I was I got me one have a drink. It was the Shane McGowan documentary. Oh, uh, that's right. I was to get on it, yeah. 
and it's just easy, and obviously it's hard, it's hard not to watch him do anything without wanting a beer because all he does is drink. Yeah, it's amazing. I need I need to get on it. I said I saw I saw um, an interview with him. If he was probably from the nineties. Yeah. But I watched it about twenty years ago. Do you know what I mean? It, it was old then. Yeah. He was just he was just at a table with sunglasses, grinning with like gin, a cup of gin. Yeah. I know that's that's when he was in his like the stages where literally words were coming out, like literally ten minutes of words was coming out like I'm not for... yeah, yeah. But there's a, there was a, I watched a random documentary of him just before the film came out, and it was following him, and he went to a place which was meant to be a pub, but it was like a little like stately home outside. And I thought, I think that's obviously when they realised he was a proper alcoholic, apart from all the drunkenness. But he was like actually getting quite agitated and quite scared because he couldn't find the bar. He was like running through like hallways, like proper like a child trying to find his mum. And when he finally got in the bar, he just didn't know what to do. So he just started waving at people and had a drink. But I was like, Jesus, I don't think I've ever got that worried. That's how I feel at an open mic when I come in and go, where's the bar? <laughs> that's when I feel like I go to an open mic and I'm like where's the stage because so far it's just a couple of chairs around, <laughs> around yeah, a book is, there are two chairs and a fat bloke just <laughs> fucking with a, with a notepad hey it's Dave um, Jeffries headlining which <laughs> i.e. means he's on last <laughs> I did see a thing the other day actually I'm talking about doing open mics and stuff like that um, you know Ant Middleton the SAS yeah. guy he's now been obviously kicked out of travel because he, he's got quite a few um, BLM Views are obviously contrary to their their the other company's values, and um, apparently he got done for punching um, a female copper and claiming it was self defence. But also, a contestant on the SAS show said he came forward to her during the film and said, "I will have sex with you by the end of this." And I just thought, has Ant Middleton ever thought about becoming a comedy promoter? He seems to have the experience. Yeah, could, could, it could work. Um, or all the he's helping abs- people. Or the real inner thoughts of of someone who pretends to actually help women and constantly yeah. post about it, and then re- in reality, that's what they're thinking. Yeah, and we, you, it's weird because obviously, like we come across quite a lot of them in the comedy scene. But if you look at like me, you, and some of the other guys <laughs> on like the southwest scene, you'd think we'd be the ones, but we're like the most anti. <laughs> yeah, trying it, to get if, laid. If, if anything real ever went down, we'd probably just, you know, after wiping all the heroin out of our veins with <laughs> <laughs> well, that's me I was like I was talking to someone about the other day I was like I'm too nervous at gig. I'm too nervous at gigs and I'm too drunk by the end of it to even say thank you to, to, a, to a girl and I just, I just, I, 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 yeah I just want to talk shit with my my friends and yeah yeah or hide or run around sweating yeah. probably looking weird but it's just because I'm nervous yeah and yeah. looking at my notes and just I've, I've, come, yeah, I'm I've coming down from something from the night before so it's got nothing to do with anything that's happening in the room <laughs> I think it was when I first started doing comedy, like especially where like, I grew up, right in a pub, and people be like, "Oh, but doing comedy gets you so many girls." He <laughs> fucking doesn't. It doesn't even get you a sniff at. Many think it's more it's of a insane. deterrent. It's insane. Yeah, it's... yeah th- these mentally ill people are going on stage to strangers and telling them what a big piece of shit they are in joke form. Yeah, it's like well, so I, was, I was talking to someone the other day. I was like, as well, like outside of comedy, I've I've like sort of stepped back from telling people I do it. Which is kind of sad, but also it's just because, like, cause when you tell people you do it, you go get the s- different types of people. You get the person who's just generally quite interested. They ask questions about it. What's it like? Yeah. You get um, the one person who demands that you make them laugh, and yeah. the third one, which I think is the worst one. They always do the same thing. They do a thing where they look around their shoulders, just make sure, you, make sure I look around. Thing is, I've been thinking about doing it, and it's like, oh really? Oh yeah, yeah I've been thinking about doing. It. My friends say I should do it all the time. Well, I can show you the forum where like they should put the games. No. no, no. It's like, well, shut up then. Stop, stop talking. Yeah, I don't. Unless I know, if I meet someone newish, I don't really tell them. Unless it, unless at some point I feel okay with telling them. Yeah, I, I say I say I like that. But as soon as like, I, if I meet like if I'm in a group of people I don't really know that well, or someone's in the group, and everyone starts going, "Oh, he's funny," then yeah, the ego comes in. Yeah, but I do comedy. Oh, do you? Yeah. Yeah, luckily. I wouldn't. I, I was just. I would just talk shit and try and make people laugh as normal uh, yeah. without saying it. If someone did yeah. say it and said he does comedy, I don't like it. I don't yeah, like it. and yeah. So it's, it's at least we're not like you know when you meet someone who sings. They're a singer. They sing in a band. It's usually, like I've got a few friends. They're, they're lovely people. Don't get me wrong, but they are people who like they sing at like weddings and stuff like that, like bar bands and stuff like that. And they tell you I do sing, and you're like, oh, fantastic. And then they just start singing. Yeah, no, that's not okay. Yeah, 
It's not okay. Yes. Don't sing. You might be a brilliant singer. I don't want to hear it right mm. now. Exactly. There's no music. music. And it's just like... Yeah, it's... It well, no, it's like, um, I've got a friend, she does it there. Bless her. She, she obviously just really comfortable herself. She loves singing, which is fair enough. But we'll be sat in a pub chat and, and yeah, she'll be in the table and then she'll just start harmonising to herself, oh. expecting everyone to stop and just no. watch. Then <laughs> you think we all get louder to shut up. She's going to get discovered in, in um, fucking, I don't know. Mother's of Ruin. Some... Yeah, Mother's Ruin, exactly. It's, it's mm-hmm. not going to happen. Yeah, it's the worst. I know she's a really good singer as well. She does. She's really good. She just yeah. occasionally does gigs and stuff, but there, then she'll like embarrassingly start doing it on a Zoom call. It's like, yeah, it's just. I think like even with like a good microphone, you still sound distorted on on a Zoom call. Yeah. And so what people don't really know is we, me and you, both got Italian accents because of the microphones. We sound like we two have, weird we, Welsh. We, um, we have got very Bristol. classy Italian Italian accents and. Um, the poor sound quality we both sound like two blithering southwest idiots exactly that, that's, that's why we sound stupid and we're also hilarious and the best comedians ever that ever but, fell but, out but, of our stunts and... exactly well no, technically i was out as my mum said i came out the sunroof because i was at a, a c-section because oh, i lazy lazy birth no it? no 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 there was a there was um i, I wriggled too much I, apparently i was doing like a joy division dancing in the tummy and the umbilical cord wrapped around my neck. So my, I don't know if it, I was like an early sign. I think my mum was trying to strangle me from a very young age. Probably, but, um, probably had to scan, saw, saw you and thought, no, he's not, he's not a good yeah. one. That's a and bad started, baby. Started sh- doing like shimmy and so let me spin, spin, spin me around. And yeah, so as my mum said, I, kept, I didn't come out the front door. I came out the sunroof, which I don't know what house has a sunroof, but such is the modern world. Actually, I've got a sunroof. I have a, like a window in the roof. Oh, I don't know what you mean. A, a yeah. roof window. I don't <laughs> bonded, bonded on different types of uh, transparent devices. Oh, yeah. That's, what, that's one thing. I would definitely, that's one topic I definitely want to bring up with you. Um, that, I was having a conversation know. with um, Jack Hardacres, George Willoughby, Jack Lloyd, and some bizarre reason, Fred Worms got brought up. I had no idea what Fred Worms were. You know what they are? No. Don't Google it. Do not Google it. Do not Google it. Image it. It will make you sick. Fred, sorry, Fred Worms. Thread worms, yeah. Thread, as in like thread. Oh, thread worms. Okay, you, it's your, it's your uh, thing. I'm going to get it on my phone. I won't bring it up on air because it sounds like. Yeah, because the images there. are disgusting. Uh, thread worms. Da, 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 da. Tiny worms that can infect your gut. Okay, I've probably got them. That's probably what makes me shit myself all the time. Yeah, can. and they come out your anus, though. They crawl out your anus. And oh, little white, oh, they're like maggots. God. Yeah, like maggots. Yeah, I think I know some people on the comedy scene that are actually threadworms. <laughs> um, Bottom feed and maggots, bless them. <laughs> yeah, um, nice, those pictures. But yeah, thank you for bringing, for bringing that up. They got bought up and I googled it and it was disgusting. And me and both me and Harley were saying today to each other, I now have a new phobia, which is having threadworms. Because the reason they got bought up, I think George sent a picture of like um, someone commenting on Facebook about a really harsh date. Apparently yeah. the woman said she, she met with him in a pub where 12 of his friends were there. And um, he, he just started, he just left her and started playing darts with his mates while she just sat there with some like, randomly. Eventually, he came back and invited her back round to his, which he did. And they got comfortable with each other. And he asked her if she could put her tongue in his bum hole, as that's the only thing that turns him on. And she said as he pulled his trousers down, his uh, anus was skid marked and had thread worms coming out. Not just one or two, but like literally like, double figures just crawling out of his anus. And she was... Uh, I got quite funny with her about that, uh, even though obviously I, I didn't comment because it was like a random picture of George oh, But why at all oh, lardy da complaining about it? You literally went to the shittest day with this bloke who left you to play tights with his mates. You still went home and he asked you to lick his anus and you still agreed to it. And then suddenly your high society, just because you've got a couple of maggots coming out at all, you're going to put yeah, your tongue in there. If, you, if, you've agreed, if you'd agreed to lick an ass at that point, you yeah. got to go through the maggots. There's shit up there. Yeah. The maggots are probably cleaner than the shit. Yeah, literally. They're, they're the reason that the anus is relatively clean. It's because they've burrowed through. I don't know if they eat the shit, but again, I looked in the picture and all it showed was one picture of a turd with a load of white maggots over it, so I was like, no, that'll be me. Maybe I could, um, maybe I need some of those maggots to help me clean my area. Actually, I'm doing much better. I'm doing much better. Hey, actually, no, no problems for a while. I, yeah, I've actually been all right. I've had no worries. I've had I, the, the close I had. I went for a walk a couple of weeks. I go for like a walk every day now. And a couple of weeks ago, I had a walk, and then I got twinge. And it, it was like I was so close to the house. But you know when you start like making like promises to God in your head when you get close, like I promise I will make a mosque in your honor if you do not let me shit myself in the middle I'll of the village. Down. Yeah. Um, yeah. I 
more or less been okay, but it might be because I haven't been out a lot. I've been on walks, but I do do it a bit tactical sometimes. Like yesterday, I went out around town for ages and got coffee and stuff, but I didn't eat anything before I went out. Uh, okay. I think there might have been a, like an extra. Yeah. I was I was dizzy by the time I finished because I hadn't eaten. But, um, All malnourished. I've had a couple of yeah issues. The last bad one was like I told you a few months ago that it was. Um, I showed you a map and stuff. Yeah, you showed me the, uh, the building site, wasn't it? A building, a building site, and then an alley. <laughs> <laughs> the the, the same walk. Yeah, but there was no other choice. The other uh, choice was to just shit in my trousers right now and have ho- this crowd of people behind me just watch runny shit come out of my jeans. Uh, or they watch you in an alleyway squatted. But I, I tried to hold on with everything I could. To I think you were squatting in an alleyway like a Geordie on a hen party. Oh, it was foul from the smell. But yeah, <laughs> oh, no. Much better. Um, I guess I, pro- I haven't been drinking as much, so mm. that might have something to do with it. Because I think when I used to come out to Bristol and stuff, I would always go to a pub and have a couple of nice beers somewhere. Yeah. And I'd always have problems on those nights, so I, and against us or something. So maybe... <laughs> Whatever my intolerance, I think cold. it's a gluten. I think it's a gluten thing. Yeah, I feel that also a cold ginster mixed in with loads of lager. Is it? It's not exactly. It's not exactly yeah, it's... clean bowel movements, is it? Yeah, it's just it just got bad. I permanently had a modium on me. Yeah, same. I've done that as well. Yeah. Uh, you know, it was you that told me to always have a modium on you on me. My, and it, did, it did help me out a few times, but you'd have your bad time, and then you pop two, and then you might have another go while it's yeah. settling and stuff but yeah. then after that sealed up it's just literally yeah you could just so you're living love either local for the rest of the night yeah but, um well that's the thing it's like that's why i get worried about because like people can come say to me or oh, do you want to meet up in like the harbour side just for a walk or have some cans or have a walk problem is if when, when it was walking obviously you had the safety of the pubs so you just walk in and use that toilet just in case you got yeah. caught short yeah. but obviously none of the public toilets are open none of the pubs are open so i'm generally i turn into a bit of a hermit on that per- reason yeah, that's that's a big problem. That's a big problem to me. Like someone did ask me to go out the other day, and I was like, literally, mm. are there public, are there toilets anywhere? Because yeah. I can't, I can't travel for an hour. Not that I would because of the pandemic. I yeah. can't travel, <laughs> whatever the amount I'm allowed is. Yeah, <laughs> I can't do that, and then go for a walk and get a coffee. We're talking yeah. three, four hours of my time, and at yeah. some point in that four hours, there's a good chance we're going to take a shit. <laughs> yeah, well, even that, even for a piss, because like, I, because like, I went for a walk the other day on the sea wall by my where my parents live. And it's surrounded by fields, surrounded by emptiness. But um, it was impossible oh, for me to go from. It was, but yeah, literally, it literally is. It's all salty and a, a dead place. And I'll, I'll tell you, actually, quite interesting about that. Um, but um, yeah, um, every time you go for a piss, literally everyone would turn up. Just literally, it's impossible to piss. So that's what my major was, even pissing itself, because you don't want to end up on the nonce list, which actually happened to a friend of mine. We didn't get on the nonce list, but he got telling off by the police because he got caught peeing in public. A pair of fifty quid fine. You should be you should be allowed to pee, but maybe not right in public. Find a bush. No, no, he was like hidden as well. But police literally just were walking past us at the street that he was peeing down. Go and, and hey, police, go and solve some crime. I just say piss on, not don't piss on the police because I don't want to give that message out. But just piss near them. They won't you won't go near anyone, no matter how. Many 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 years ago, I pissed on a police car in front of the police. I didn't. Nothing happened. What? Why not? Did you stop pooing? <laughs> I can't really remember, but I, it was in a, we had this town we used to drink in, and you have to walk through a Tesco car park to get home. Yeah. And I was just pissing up a car in that car park, and the police pulled yeah. up and went, what, what are you doing? And I turned around and just carried on pissing up their car. And I was like, I'm having a piss. <laughs> <I'm having laughs> now, I can't really, it was a long time ago, and I can't really remember yeah. the way the conversation went, but yeah. basically, they, they just left. <laughs> <laughs> was, I think we've yeah, all due respect, they just. Hopefully no they're on the end of their shift and they want these to go away. <laughs> but I guess, yeah, I guess, no disrespect to you, but I'm sure they probably just have bigger fish to fry than the pissing yeah, well, Welshman. Well, 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 well. <laughs> um, probably someone getting stabbed or someone getting flogged somewhere and then... It's like, can't, and like, you can't really say, like, if, like, say if like, a kid got stabbed and they said, well, where were the police? And they said, oh, this man was weeing. They probably just like, look, we'll let it slow, bless them. But hopefully, with... hopefully, hopefully someone was getting stabbed at the time. Yeah, I, I think someone said um, every t- 20 seconds someone's been stabbed in England somewhere. And I was like, that seems not enough. Yeah, also, what did they say, though, before the stabbing? What did they do? 
Yeah, it's like... they, are they all in, are they all completely? You shouldn't stab anyone. I'm not saying that, but are, yeah. are all the people that get stabbed are all yeah. of them completely well behaved up to that moment? Yeah, and plus, what what we constituting as a stabbing is like? Are we talking is real knives? Like... Are we talking foam swords? Compass like, at school. Along? Yeah. I mean, oh I'll... yeah, like yeah. It's... I should say, I don't know, I should remind, literally, for some bizarre reason, remind me, um, <laughs> there was this, um, kid we didn't like in our class, because he was a, he was just one of those kids who was just a bellend, but he had never had friends, but he was always a dick to everyone, and, um, me and my mate got really annoyed with him when we sat behind him in geography, so when he wasn't looking, we took his geography book, and my mate bought a tin of spam in, and we put a piece of spa- slice of spam in each page, and pushed it down so it stuck together, and, uh, yeah, and that kid's now in prison for six and a half years for smuggling cocaine. Yeah. Cool. That's a that's a that's quite a cool thing to go to prison for, though. If you're going to do it, it's like cocaine cowboys. Yeah, not uh, nothing to do with the spam. Yeah, if uh, I found out about the spam, it could have been could have been a lot worse. There's a couple of good um, documentaries about coke. Um, cocaine cowboys, obviously. Of course, There's yeah. Two of those, but the first one is brilliant. Um, and then um, well, it's kind of not really, but it's called the Seven Five. It's about the seventy fifth precinct in New York. Yeah. police in the 80s and it's about this guy he's a bit arrogant and weird now he's got a cigar company and stuff now he's yeah, out of prison but um it's really interesting so he said his first day on the job in new york his colleagues other police threw someone out of a window to his death huh? and they said they said just don't ever say anything that's not what we do yeah. here so he's like, okay and then he's in but he's got more and more where they're robbing drug dealers selling coke snorting coke just got out of hand yeah to the point to the point where I mean, this was the whole police department, by the way. It wasn't a couple of bad apples. <laughs> <laughs> it was the whole thing. To the point where he was turning up to work in like a Ferrari. <laughs> and nobody questioned. They just well, threw people up and Eventually, they, they obviously all got caught and he went to prison. But... <laughs> yeah, yeah, I think, yeah. It's like, uh, it's like you never, it's like, did, did these coppers ever watch Scarface today? Or like Goodfellas? It always ends. It never goes on forever. Goodfellas with the scene where he, he buys the wife the mink coat and he comes yeah. up and De Niro goes mental. Yeah, exactly. Even they had standards. The, the don't, buy don't buy anything. Don't buy anything. Don't buy. Don't buy nothing. That's what. Um, that, no, that's what. That's actually because I think my favourite film, Goodfellas. My all time favourite. I watch it probably once a year. I, I probably once a, a year. Years. Amateur. I watched. I watched it uh, a few months ago, and every time I watch it, I notice something different, and I like it more. Like mm. I can't ever get bored of it. The, one, the, one, the only thing I do get, I, I love it because I love Joe Pesci, I love Ray Liotta, but obviously they meet each other when they, they show that they meet when they're kids. And then it yeah. comes like a couple of years when they're waiting outside the cafe to rob that lorry. You've got young Ray Liotta look, stood there looking all dapper in his suit. And you've got Joe Pesci who's like, I don't know if it was just something about him, but he always looks like he's in his 40s no matter how old he was. <laughs> like Joe Pesci, like, he looks like a kid in the fucking five minutes ago. Now he's like, but even in that, um, the, the Irishman, they had to make him look older, and he's the oldest looking one. It's like fucking hell, Joe. Yeah, I, I watched that. I watched it again the other day. Actually, so I do like it. It's very different mm. to anything else, but it's um, it's I, I, I just think it's really good. It's long, but I mean, I it's good. It. It's it. good. It's a good story. It's good dialogue. Obviously, but I a lot like, of people, a lot of people um, expect in violence, like good fellow style, but it's just yeah. There are a couple of things that are a bit odd, like where he beats up the greengrocer. Yeah. Um, you can tell that he's old because it's his body with a younger face. Yeah. And the way he's kicking him, he's like the way an old man was kicking him, but <laughs> like his elbows are all locked in. Have you seen the picture of him stood next to Al Pacino? Because um, he's obviously considerably shorter than Al Pacino, they had to give him special shoes. And so he had to wear like calipers, whatever they're called, like the big chunky Herman Munster, oh, wow. Munster shoes. Oh, Robert. Suddenly you don't look so that. scary. Pacino was good as um, Hoffa in that. Yeah. So he's quite, which, quite good. Which I think is good because I, I don't know about Pacino, but he has let himself down with a few films recently. Like he's in Jack and Jill, the Adam Sandler film, where Adam Sandler finds out he has a twin sister, which is Adam Sandler in drag. Of course it is. <laughs> and Al Pacino falls in love with Adam Sandler's sister Jill. But, but he's Al Pacino playing himself. I was like Al Pacino. Gee, well, like, I get like actors need money, but uh, do Adam Sandler films offer that much money? Probably, but I think I think they do well. I, yeah, not, right. like yeah. I, th- I think I think they're pr- they've all been pretty successful. I think I, I went off them after like four yeah. films in the nineties. <laughs> That's literally. Have you ever seen like a, a group of like Adam Sandler fans like pictures of him outside like a premiere for like one of his new home like so, I don't something know. I Ad, Adam gets Adam gets a ball bag sort of film. Yeah. But it's um it's literally like, it literally looks like um. 
Oh, on a, on a, on a, again, we got to use this word politely. When I was a kid, there used to be a special bus that used to drive past us with people going to uh, yeah. the rainbow. Got, gotcha. A lot of um, wailing hands and damp seats because of drooling. But they look like those. They look like a bunch of clapping people that need help sometimes. That's just pleasant. Did I ever tell you I got beat up by someone like that once? Like, really? Like... You mean uh, a what some people would call have a special kind of strength. Yeah, literally, well, no, that's, like, uh, that's the best way I can describe it. It had Lenny from the Most of Men's Strength. <laughs> like, which Lenny, obviously, is just a man who just needs a bit of help. That's all he needs. Some of them will fuck you up. No, no, literally, you know, he, he, it was, I, I, even though I say to everyone, fair play, he beat me up. But also, I do sort of go, well, he did sucker punch me. Not that I'm trying to hide the embarrassment of getting beat up by a gentleman of his calibre. But, um, <laughs> no, because what happened was, it was like, when I was working retail, I had a lot more days off in the week. You say retail, right? Retail. When, yeah. when I was working with... Re- he was he was retailed. Retail in a clothing shop. I had um, a lot of days off in the week. And so on my days off, I would just go to like... I used to collect DVDs. I used to like really like having a big collection of DVDs before like, Netflix came through. That's how long ago it was. And I was in HMV and I was just looking through films just to see if there was any new DVDs or any old classics I didn't have yet. And... I had my earphones in, had these really cool pair of sun- Ray-Bans on as well, because it, it was a warm summer's day. And this guy walks in who was obviously the, the gentleman's helper to help him get from A to B without him falling into a well or anything like that. And um, they both come stand opposite side of me, both looking at DVDs as well. And I sort of paused my music because I thought they, they were stood so close to me, I thought they were like, stopping to ask me something, but, but they weren't. But um, the gentleman in question kept getting a DVD out. And said, I'm not going to do a voice. He kept getting a DVD out and kept saying to his friend, can I have this? And he goes, no, you can't have that. You, you spent your pocket money. He goes, well, can I have this? He's like, no, you spent your pocket money. You, you, you spent all your stuff. Today. You ask, if you ask me again, you're not having your dinner and I'll stand on your head. They, yeah. <laughs> they can put it on Panorama later. And it will be in the in the basement basement for you tonight if you don't be quiet sort of thing. But um, he's getting more agitated. But he's literally just picking random DVDs now just so he can get his way. And he's like, and I'm still stood. I'm, I pause it because he's making these weird. Oh, I'm not gonna do an impression of him, but the noises were <laughs> between talking. So he's obviously getting quite himself quite worked up. Yeah. Like, <laughs> like he's trying. Like, he, was, he was a ghost. He was yawning. He was like yawning. Or, yeah. And then eventually he got really angry and obviously wanted to get to this guy. But to get to him, he had to go through me first because I was still in the way. He whacked me in the back of the head, and I fell into the DVD. I fell into the DVD <laughs> shelf. I fell into the DVD shelf and he hit me again on the forehead. I fell back and all the DVDs fell on me. And he stamped on my stomach as he climbed oh over me to get to his friend. And his, his well, I'm not, I'm not saying carer, his friend who was helping him. Yeah. So I restrained him and then dragged him out of the shop and they like, they scarfed. And um, so I left like, there covered in DVDs. Yeah, with my, literally, where we came to with like You Mean Dupree on my face. It was like a, not even a good film to wake up to. And my ray bands were broke, snapped, <laughs> completely snapped in half, expensive as well. <laughs> And um, next thing, um, the Mal, this is the Mal Cribs Causeway, the security came and like, picked me up and like, started like, escorting me away. And I was like, what? Like, I was getting proper, like, this is a travesty. Like, what have I done? And they took me down to, like, I didn't even know this. Like, shopping centres have, like, like a prison cells, like little cells to put shoplifters in and stuff like that. Mm. And they're taking me down there, and I'm starting to get, like, Midnight Express vibes in my head, like, me getting bummed by the the head security of the Mal just because I didn't give him enough cigarettes. It's cold fiction. That. Yeah, literally. But um, no, they just took me down there just so I can. There was a first aider, so they give me first aid and stuff like that. And I got a twenty pound gift voucher from H and B. Pretty good. So sometimes, good. so sometimes they should have written. They should have written what it's for. So get beaten up by a slow kid in. Yeah, H&B. getting beat up by. Um, it would have been funny if you'd have woken up and Rain Man was on the DVD. <laughs> That'd be a great start to a film, actually. I mean, like he was, he was, a, he was. A, well, and then you just become an then you just become an Avenger and go around beating up special needs kids with a cane. <laughs> uh, we never said he had special needs. Uh, we didn't, did we? But if he, if he did. <laughs> I'm joking. But yeah, I can imagine. It now it's like young boy, retail worker, everything going for him, but then suddenly he's punched by a rhymes with strong, and <laughs> he wakes up and he is also now a rhymes with wrong, and uh, he now has to it'd be like a sort of slapsticky comedy, like. David changes his pants, sort of thing. That's what it's called. You just go fuck with it. these people. You just let the tires down on the bus that they use. Yeah, and yeah, it's just me and my. I get it. 
<laughs> I don't know if this is going to sound really weird, but I was having a conversation with a friend like this saying, um, if they ever did like a documentary watching two people that need help live in a flat on their own but with no help, would you watch it? They need help, but they they're not getting any help. Definitely, I'll definitely will. just, I'll, just I'll one, just one, just, let's say let's say six hours. They can give a six hours in a flat on their own. Yeah, I'll, I'll and, give it a whirl. Yeah, I mean, is anything locked up, or can they drink bleach? Was it? Is it just? Um, <laughs> well, that's the thing. I mean, that's literally what we were discussing. Like, would they leave stuff that could be potentially harmless, not on purpose, but just as everyday items? So, like knives, um, bleach. And I was like, you, know, you have to keep that because so, otherwise it will just be them peeling oranges and stuff. Um, but you could you could get like a task they've got to make dinner and stuff. Yeah. Well, saying that, I watched um, I watched um, I'm not gonna make fun of it. I'm not making any jokes about it. But I watched no, that um, Kate, and then no, I mean, I, I watched that Katie Price documentary about her with Harvey. Yeah. How she lives, and this isn't Great a mother. new bit. This is this, this isn't a new bit. This isn't a bit of joke. But no, he can make pasta, and he has got probably one of the most severest like disabilities. <laughs> so I guess yeah, it's not it's not. I, if if Harvey Price no, can do it and you can do it, what's going on there? I, I think he, I think he, I think he's reasonable. Hello, you cunt. I think he's. Um... <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, yeah, you I can't do he... that. that I didn't watch the documentary, but I just watched that clip over and over again for a while. Yeah, but uh, we won't go down the Harvey Price route because <laughs> we could be here for hours. It's um, a bumpy road. <laughs> oh, but um, what we talk? Oh yeah, when I got beaten by a person that runs with long. Um, but yeah, so I got twenty pounds. Long, yeah, long, wrong, and strong. <laughs> long, wrong, and strong. <laughs> that is what my name of my film is going to be. <laughs> <laughs> but um, saying that, actually, have you seen um, you know the singer Sia, who wears like the wig? Oh yeah, yeah. She um, she's done a film about um, Kate Hudson plays a recovering drug addict, and um, she finds out she's got half sister who's got like the, like, the severest autism, and uh, she has to then like coming of age like look after her but the film's getting panned because it turns out Sia got advice from people who claimed they were with like the like the autism like whatever they call it organization but they were lying just so they can get free tickets to go see her so they gave like false information so she's made a film on this false information and everyone's actually oh panning her but the thing is like there's like a bit during the film where like they have like a music video where Sia comes and sings and it's all bright colors and flashing lights and everyone's like yeah you can't get anyone with autism to come in and watch that <laughs> also, with severe autism, because there, there would be anarchy in the in the aisles. We've made a film to celebrate autism, but people with autism cannot watch it. It's the... There's, um, I would love to have seen that CCTV of that HMV thing, though, if you could find it. Oh, I, mean, sure. I, I, the similar one that I used to work in, um, support. I used to be a support worker for mental health. You were years ago, yeah. No, really, you? <laughs> I did do it for a while, and there, there yeah. might be. There might, I was pretty good. There might be CCTV of me fighting with one in a Tesco. Uh, <laughs> just because, just <forward. laughs> Well, he was. He had. Th- he had the thing where, if there's food around or bleach, or yeah. a whole jar of marmite, he'd just put it in his mouth. He eat, 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 eat. Uh, I can't. I think my peak or something. But we were in Tesco, and he couldn't talk or anything. He just made noises. Yeah. Um. And he just put his hand out and took a donut and put it in in one. He just went, um. And then he tried to take another one. So I like <laughs> grabbed his arm. Like, Come on. <laughs> and yeah. then he started pushing me. And then the, if you'd have seen the CTV, it was just this wrestling match between me and this long, strong, <laughs> and wrong man. The, <laughs> we're fighting and like bumping into the sweets. His double decker's <laughs> falling off. Um, but yeah. Sounds like. Interesting job. Sounds like what would happen if Augustus Gloop didn't get chucked into the river. <laughs> him and his German mum stop fight him. Yeah, well, it was a tough one, though. That was a tough... I did that job for a while, while I was at uni. And, uh, yeah. I read, I read, funny enough, I read an article quite recently, actually, about um, a guy who had a job like that, like a carer, uh, for someone long, strong, and strong. And, um, <laughs> and, um, but um, he took... This guy had like, loads of pocket money, or like, loads of money, like a budget he saved up and he you take him shopping in this town he wants to get some stuff but this carer couldn't be bothered so he took this person to a brothel put the 300 quid behind the, the, the behind the till there or whatever i don't know i don't know how it is i don't know how I inside the brothel a till. Yeah, put it put it in there have you got a credit card so i'll just swipe it straight yes. in there oh. and said here's what can you how long will that last and then the woman said um that'll be about two hours worth i reckon which seems 
I don't know. Again, I don't know how brothel works. That seems expensive, even for. But and he left him there for two hours, and he went out to a pub and went to get some beers, had a cigarette, met with some friends, had a catch up, and then came, took him back. And uh, yeah, so... fair. I believe there are there are people of that ilk, of that female ilk, that offer services to mm. long one strong men. Mm. And you know, and they only charge three hundred quid, and I can't get a text back. I think you should. Ch- I think you need to charge a premium if it's, you know. Oh special, yeah, it's a specialist. Always like, yeah, Speci- it's like, a specialist, um, not special. Yeah, no, it's a specialist. It's a it's a long, long, wrong and strong way to make a living. It is. Bless but, them. Um, wonder if no, no, I won't. I can't. I can't say anything else about that because everything I'm thinking of, I'm trying to rein rein myself in a little bit today. It's Sunday, isn't it? <laughs> no, <laughs> God's yeah. listening. Um, we, we, well, last time we had this, one of these calls, we talked about serial killers. Should we start talking about serial killers now? We can. Um, I watched the Netflix documentary on um, Richard Ramirez, which I knew about the case anyway. Yeah. Is that the one that said Hell Satan when he got... Is he the one that said Hell Satan when he got sent down? I think so. He had a pentagram on Nasty, his hand. Yeah. Hell Satan. Um, yeah. But he had fans and stuff, so in the courthouse, there were girls. Mm. And always, always young girls are hanging around yeah. with pentagrams on and loving it. Um, but he was crazy. He would like, he would just normally go into a house, shoot the husband in the head, right? Yeah. And then really do, be, do disgusting stuff to. to yeah. Women. Or shoot kids and old women. It was just he didn't really have a, a preferred thing. He was very, he was very so. diverse. He was like, he was like a, he was like a Bristol comedy promoter. Very diverse. Very diverse. Um, yeah. Please promote equally. Um, there's nothing wrong with that. It's good. Please, if you're oh, really? a serial killer, kill. You, know, pick. you, no, you can't be picky, can you? No prejudice. Exactly. There was, um, oh, where did I hear this? There was a serial killer I was hearing about the other day. I don't know where I heard I think it was another podcast or something. But about a guy who would, um, it's, it's a horrible reason, but it actually comes back to the long, wrong, and strong by things. But um, he would only kill long, wrong, and long, wrong, and strong people, kids, or um, kids of a different colour. Because in those, society, in those days in society, in like the forties and the fifties, it was. Um, they said no one gave, no one really cared if one of them went missing. That's why he did it. And he got away with it for years. And it wasn't until it was all. Who was that telling me about that? That's an interesting one. I'm not happy about this one. Because there was, there was another. Because I tell you what, cause there was another one where um, try and Google that. A guy, a guy. Um, I don't think my friend Taylor was telling me about. It. It, was a, it was a guy who um called the police up and said, "I got all this stuff on my floppy disk about my murder and my evil deeds." If I yeah. give it to you, would you be able to track me down? And they were like, no, no, of course not. And he was like, good. And it turns out they could. They obviously lied. They weren't going to go, no, no. Yeah, yeah. But um, the guy tried being like a Zodiac killer, but completely fucked himself by giving the police everything. He was like, I want to be Zodiac. Where did I hear that? I tried to, go- to Google it, and um, I found the opposite. So I looked for, you know... I'm going to have to try and re it here. I that was it. That killers. was that's that's where that's where I got it from. It was um oh so far, um someone a friend of mine sent me the link. And it's like, let me. There's a comedian. Actually, it was a podcast. It was all about um. Well, I found um serial killers, murderers, and criminals with physical disabilities. Oh, number one really? is Oscar Oscar Pistorius. Come on. Oh well. <laughs> yeah. Well. Uh, so it, number two is Sasaku Nakamura. Sasaku Nakamura. Yeah. Uh, it's, not, it's not racist. <laughs> it's not, um, stop t- stop telling Jap- with your eyes. A, ja- a Japanese <laughs> deaf serial killer. Huh? Didn't. A Japanese <laughs> deaf serial killer known as Hamamatsu Deaf Killer <laughs> who stabbed hmm. nine people to death. To yeah. death. Hey. Death, hey. Right? So he stabbed them in the ear. During, or during the 30s and 40s. In 1938, he raped and murdered two women whilst he was aged just 14. Over the next four years, he'd kill and injure several more, including his brother, father, sister, brother's wife, and child, a random couple and their family. When arrested, he admitted two more murderers. He was executed shortly after his trial. How did he admit it? Well, yes. Uh, that, was, that was a bit of a weird presumption for me. Then deaf people can speak what I'm being silly. Yeah. But, um, I did it. I did it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, do you reckon he did that because he had a chip on his shoulder about being deaf? Or do you reckon he was... It was just sick of people going. You were sick of people listening to things and enjoying I things they were once. listening to. What's yeah. the matter? Are you deaf? And it's like, <laughs> yeah. actually. Yeah. Um, I, want, I don't want. If anyone can actually do an impression of a 
deaf Asian man without sounding racist or any way offensive. I'd be very interested to hear that. Who did he kill? Or she kill? Could be anyone. This is written really weirdly. Badget wounded in a shooting, shot in the chest, neck and head. Um, his brain on the floor, no one thought he'd survive, but he did survive, and yet even though he's a blind, he was now a blind quadriplegic living in a care facility, he confessed to multiple gangland hits in 2004. Oh, so when he was a blind quadriplegic, he was killing people. Bloody hell. That, that would be a good crazy. film. That would be a great film. Why didn't they make a film like that? Film. Instead of making they Ted did... Bundy ones where Ted Bundy looks sexy. Like, what? They made that horror film called Don't Breathe, right, where those kids break into the house and there's a blind yeah. guy in there and he fucks them all up and then gets to a point where he's also got a big art- artificial mm. insemination yeah. syringe. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> I was watching, actually, I was watching that, um, it's on YouTube now, if anyone is who's ever listened to this, is, you can watch it, it's called Appropriate Adult, about um, Dominic West, coincidentally named, um, where he played Fred West, about Fred and Rose West. And it's based oh, yeah. on all it's based on all the tapes. There's a documentary as well where you can actually hear Fred West talking about what he did. Yeah, I've heard. It's that. quite interesting. Um, but yeah, it's all based on that. And Dominic West is fantastic as Fred West, like yes. proper like goes for it. But um, it, it was it was an old fellow because like um, there's one bit where they they take him, the scene as they take him to the field where he had some people buried, and it, it was. If you take it out of context of how serious and if it was real life, it is quite funny. He's like walking around and he's like, oh, it's just lovely. This is this is uh, me, Rose, used to come here for picnics with the kids. We used to come here on holiday, bring a caravan down here and have a holiday. And then the, the police investigator goes, right, Fred, well, we're not here to discuss your lovely holiday. We're here to find where the, the buried, child buried, your ex-wife We're, we're here to discuss your lovely romantic <laughs> And um, that's the only got, because obviously like, they had kids living in the house whilst this was all happening. They knew nothing. Well, they knew nothing about it, apparently. But like, it was like a brothel upstairs or something. Like Rose West was having it off with well, the, Fred Watson for a whole. One of the, yeah, and also one of the conspiracies is that she was fucking judges and coppers. All yeah, that's town. yeah. And the, so when because they got investigated, or they, their kids were taken into A A and E like twenty nine times or something. Yeah, it was nothing something was ever done that, yeah. by social services. It never got yeah. to a yeah. point where they took them away. I think I think like the person who was in charge of social service, especially, but was literally had it in from because yeah, cause, like it was like twenty nine times, yeah, literally, like, literally ridiculous amount of times, like they were getting chucked away. And there's one bit as well. It's, I shouldn't laugh at this, but it does make me laugh. There's like Fred West about the time he killed a mama and her daughter, like a little girl, and he's like, um, so I met her in a pub, right, and uh, I got chatting to her, and and oh, it sounds like as well. Fred West apparently was a bit of a charmer, apparently, even though he looks like fucking an elf. Yeah, but um, he's like, yeah. So, uh, so we took her outside. Um, to, went into a car of her, uh, but before he did that, I strangled her in the car park. <laughs> and he goes, strangled her, and then I go try. I went to go put her body in the boot, and open it. I didn't realise she had a little door in the back of the car, being asleep. And I thought, poor little lamb. I'm going to tell her that my mum's dead. So I killed her and all. I was like, ah, oh, considerate. Yeah, I think I'd half heard about that one. It's fucking sick. Yeah. Though, but... So rather than just tell her or just leave her somewhere. But it just sounds <laughs> like my granddad telling a story. It's like you know, I went down the church and. That's got, it. Got, got got some tea on the way home, and you know, I thought we'd buy this <laughs> packet of opal fruits. Yeah. That's it. That's what it sounds like. Though you listen to the tapes, yeah, he's like, he's like, you know, I strangled. I thought, oh god, Rose is going to come home soon. So you know, I had to do something. So, uh, so I got like, sore. Like, I chopped her up. It's like lying to your wife that you broke the dishwasher or something. Yeah. Like it's like, oh god, she'll be home in a minute. I better be better home. close this and turn <laughs> it off. And that's why that's why it sounds like it's like talk about the time. Like it sounds like he's telling his mates about the time where, you, yeah, like he he forgot to defrost the chicken and yeah, yeah so I had to do something because I was panicking see because she wouldn't be happy I Coming smashed in. the window and threw it away said we've been burgled <laughs> and um, but the appropriate adult so like her job because they said obviously they thought Fred West had maybe learning difficulties or just wasn't processing what's going on so the appropriate adult's job was just there to help him but when he speaks to her outside the, he's, she's not she's confidential she's not allowed to say anything and he used to tell her everything so she couldn't tell him like he used to say, there's more in the garden. There's more there, and she literally was like legally obliged not to tell him. She couldn't tell him. So That's until one day, which she... you would think that if someone's confessing to shit like that, you you go okay, okay, I can. Yeah, I think I like to think the judges would be a bit like, all right, fair enough, we'll let this one slide. But um, yeah, yeah. I, watched I, it. I want 
I do want to go to the site. I still want to go. It's because I've Google Earth it. And it's on the road. Now, we, could go. we should go when it's away from. I think from so. so what what they did was um, they just kind of made they knocked the house down and made it a cut through to a new housing estate. Yeah. So it's kind of like it, you can walk on this um, wide footpath and that's the garden. Yeah. <laughs> do you, I mean, yeah, do you want to do stuff like we'll find out exactly where stuff was and we can walk over the graves yeah. and just breathe. <laughs> I know I want to. Do, I'm, I'm well up for that. I, I really I actually was, It's only it's only just down the road, cross as well. It's not actually a million miles. It's, it's but um, close, a friend of mine, his boss, said um, he can remember when he was a kid at school. Well, when he was like yeah, he's like secondary school. They used to walk past Cromwell Street up in Gloucester, and he said he remembers seeing Rose West Southside waiting for trade, and he, she used to like, shout at him and scream at him. She was a state as well, didn't? Yeah, she, yeah. People were paying for her for that. I was like, I know it's Gloucester, but fucking you know, there must have been some better. I can never find it. I'm sure I've told you before as well, but they found, because he, he was a plasterer and builder and stuff. Yeah. And they found, um, yeah, I can't find, in a little village next to my hometown, you know, towards London and stuff, they they found his initials, like Fred West was here in 1978 or whatever. That'd be quite he, cool. He worked locally. But they think, yeah. he, didn't he go to Scotland for a while? Something like that, yeah. Yeah, they 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 think that he probably killed up there because yeah, the way he what he was doing didn't look like someone just started killing. Yeah, he didn't just <laughs> on a whim. It's not on a whim. Like they normally you build up, right? You'd, yeah, you know, yeah, main one. <laughs> like people who do tango dancing, they don't just go, "I want to do tango dancing." They 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 enjoy dancing quite a bit. They think, oh, "I actually want to do this as a hobby." Yeah. So they yeah, they, so they've done a few dances. Yeah, so and they get certificates and get levels. I assume. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, well done. He's killed. He's murdered his 18th child. Hooray! Get a little bag. See, um, did you see the Cecil Hotel thing? I have actually. I've watched. I watched the documentary. Yeah, I watched all that. Yeah. I, I knew. I knew about the. Uh, I knew about the case from a podcast before. And the YouTube video is still freaky, even though they think. Oh that... yes, yeah. It's, she's doing that with her hands. Like she's like con. Yeah. Like they say it's contrary. Because that's. I only knew it from the clip. I've never seen any podcast or any documentary about it before this documentary. I just knew the clip. It was like unexplained videos. It is really interesting, but I think by the end it does sound like she was just like off her antidepressants. She went down, yeah, she went down well, that, that and she went down Skid Row, bought something she shouldn't have. Yeah. The way I seen it, she was on like a bit of like a journey of discovery, I guess you could say. She was sort of like yeah. letting herself go a bit and then she probably met some people, got brought some acid or something. Oh, that's it. She said she was hanging out with like, these quirky bookshops, hanging out with these like jazz clubs and stuff like that. Yeah. You know, you're going to meet a few people that are going to be passing around something. She took something. Gone off a tits, gone onto the roof, and then tried to jump in the water, the water cooler. And yeah, because yeah, someone was like, but they they were drinking her for about ninety days. Yeah, because they, they, that couple that was yeah. it, it was it the from English Plymouth, girl, the Eastern Europe, yeah. it was an Eastern European girl and the British guy. They were like, yeah, the water was brown. I said, we well, yeah. stop drinking it then. Yeah, exactly. I, first thing I do as soon as I pour a tap and brown water came out. First thing I'm I do gonna, is one, I'm not drink it, it. <laughs> not drink it. And two, I'll go straight downstairs. Excuse me, um, I don't want to be a bother, but uh, my water is brown and it smells. Smells and it like sounds like everyone else was saying the water's brown as well. So why not check yeah. the water tanks first? Yeah. I like, I like that though. I like that though. It's the, it's the British couple who don't tell anyone. It's like the most British thing ever. Like, oh, don't cause a scene. Yeah, we're on holiday. <laughs> don't cause any drama. Let's just enjoy ourselves. I went to Portugal a couple of years ago, and uh, just for a couple of days to watch a football game, and. Um, I stayed in this really weird, the cheapest place I could find on booking.com, right? Really weird, yeah. basically like someone's house, but it was okay. But then I went to get a shower on my last day there, went to step in the bath, and there was whole sh- turds in the bath. Like someone was uh, in there, uh, just shat all along it. But when I, the, the owners didn't really speak English. So when I went downstairs, yeah. I can't remember what I did if I like, I think I like, Put the shout. I didn't even step in it. I just got myself wet and dry. Yeah, just, uh, what they call when a horse wash. Yeah, when I went downstairs, I just um, tried to say, "There's mess in the bath." <laughs> they like, ah, tudo bem, the Portuguese. Like, I was yeah. like, "I'm leaving. There's a mess in the bath. I didn't do it. Just in case <laughs> you think it's a shared bathroom." But to him, it probably sounds like it was a mess. I did it. <laughs> But that was fucking foul. It was massive turds as well. Oh, that's I, I, wretch. I tell you what, that's how, that's when I turned British. I'd be going up and down that whole corridor, banging on every door, demanding to know who it was. I should, I should have done. I was thinking I was in a bit of a rush to get out. Yeah, friends, but, I guess. Um, I guess, yeah, actually, to be honest, I say that. But if I went to a bathroom, there was loads of turds. The last thing I wanted to do was get to know the person who did it. I probably want to get out. I kind of, yeah, I want to get out a little bit. You might get shit thrown at you. I think. Who does that in a bath? Yeah. 
it's not, it's not even like lads on tour, like hey, stuff like that. It's just general disgust. And you, I, 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 can, I guess I can kind of see it if someone had come in hammered and they'd slept in it and shit themselves or something. But mm, that, that has happened to a friend of mine who I, wouldn't, who I wouldn't name, remain nameless. We've been through this before. Was it in a hotel room? Yes, in Cardiff. Me and a friend who we both, a mutual friend of ours, yeah. both got really drunk for a gig. And yeah. I woke up, went to the bathroom, and it was literally the pits. He, he, I think his whole body just like, I think he exploded. And then he slowly put himself back together and then went managed to make it to bed. So that's what it looked like. It was just stains everywhere. But we won't get we yes. won't mention his name. Madness. His name's probably Jack or Dave or Steve. Uh, I, think it, um, I think his name was Rackmoid or something like that. His name was. Uh, Rackmoid. Uh, Rackmoid, I don't know. Uh, Rackmoid. Uh, I Rackmoid. What's he like? Eh? I, I haven't seen that piece of shit for a while. We'll, have to, um, well, it sounds like we'll be able to um, do do things soon. So Yeah, you have to come down Bristol. Wait, how's it looking? We're coming down Bristol. What? Oh, move it. Um, I should know in a couple of weeks. I think I'm Wait. actually working on something tonight. So yeah, I'll talk tell you about that after. But no, no, um, that's fine. Yeah, yeah so I might, I might be, um, I might be more in Bristol later in the year. Wait, wait, wait. So we'll, we'll but, um, yeah, I must. Admit I did that. I'm, I'm living in hope. I book a whole week off for the first week when pubs open, like officially, like the June the 21st. Booked off because obviously the Euros are starting as well. Really football lads, but. It is just gonna yeah. be a. I just want a week of just letting myself go. Yeah, I'll de- I'll definitely be taking some time off around there as well. I think yeah. the way it, the way it looks like, like next month you can get Airbnbs and get takeaway pubs. Yeah, May, you can go in a pub in a small, you know, restricted six people or whatnot, and get hotels. Yeah, and then June is just like. Well, I think it's like um, end of March you can start meeting people in public areas, group of six, whatever. Then April the twelfth pubs that have outdoor area and to be honest bristol yeah. is one big outdoor pub to be honest so that's quite good so also, if the outdoor. weather if the weather gets the right there's there's the little parks like queen square and stuff you mm, just get some exactly. beers and sit in there but again um, problem is toilet issue i think they'll have them open by then because last last year last summer when i was down there they had toilets open like they had yeah, some they had some by the harbour and then you could go in um they might open non-essential retail so capital center and places like that have got Oh, that's, sorry, Cabo Circus. Oh, uh, right, yeah. Because that's another funny um, toiletry story that involves Rackloid. Um, Rackmoid, sorry, Rackmoid. Um, <laughs> so, um, me and him went to Queen Square when, during, like, when you could meet up just before the pubs opened again in that brief period when we could do stuff. Yeah. And uh, me, him, and um, Lack Lard Breaker. Fun, funny enough, I met Lack Lard like, uh, there and we had a couple of beers before I came up to see you to have that quiet no. pint up in... Uh... In the, the ponds of the fish. Yeah. Oh, that was yeah, fun time. But we met there with um, Bob Mub and um, Fran Hadley. Um, we turned up with all them lot. <laughs> and um, but obviously, we yeah, I got weak, weak blood. And me and Rack Moid, we both need to go for weak. And so behind us, it's like just like you go through the buildings, and it's like a car park sort of thing. But like loads of people going back there. Some people were urinating. Some people were putting things up their nose. Um, but me and me and me and Rack Moid, we went um for a week and we thought we were getting away with it and then we heard a gentleman's voice go do you mind and we were pissing on his car because it was an underground car park oh jesus and we were pissing through the gap not knowing for on his poor guy's car but he was really nice about it. he was like oh gosh you mind not doing that and i was like oh sorry that's very nice sorry yeah but it's again the best, way, the best way to treat people who made a piss mistake um actually yeah. they, they do they also at that time last july and stuff they had portaloos up somewhere I can't yeah. remember exactly where, but somewhere in that vicinity. Yeah, of like King Apple Street. Yeah, King Street. Yeah, because yeah. me, 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 me and Lacklard Laker had, had a good piss in there before I come up to see you, actually. Because that happens, yeah, because me, me and Rack Moyd and Lacklard Laker went to <laughs> went to the city centre, but where you could buy takeaway Granny pints. Shagger. Yeah. Right. <laughs> and um, <laughs> the Granny Shagger, yeah. <laughs> Bless him. And um, we were up King Street, and it was, we got benched, but it started raining, so we, st- we ended up us huddled under a tree in Queen Square like in the rain drinking cans of Carlin but we had to keep moving because obviously even though the lockdown was happening that obviously people were still going to be homeless and homeless people just kept coming and sitting with us not that we got a problem with them, but one guy kept coming over and just oh, talk about I've being I've got a problem with it so <laughs> well, I've got a problem with them being homeless but I've got a problem with them when they come over and start talking to me but like this guy came to start talking about the Yeovil Cavalry like the, something like that talk about Yeovil and yeah, I've got you fuck all interest in you. Or licked yeah. by, by a crazy man. That's that's my issue. I'll talk to anyone, but you know. But we had, we had to go, but 
saying that because we, we did that and started absolutely tipping it down. So we went to on the waterfront where you, you can sit where like they have the bars, but they have like the show a bit. Yeah. So we were stood on that drinking, so we were deciding what we we're gonna do. And um, we're still there. And there's a group of kids, and they started on Trump. Well, on a homeless man. They um, started on him, but literally he turned around and just fought back to him, like proper went like squared up to him, and they bricked it. That was the funniest thing ever. Wow. That's and nice. he was like, pro- and me, me, Rack Moid, and Lack Lord Hate Lord Maker, um, we were stood there because we were about hundred yards on the road, and we were sort of like, oh, if they start hitting him, we're gonna have to run over and stop it because it'd yeah. be too much. But we were we were like such little children around the corner, going, please don't do anything, please. And luckily, luckily the man who has no home was a. Uh, Brave enough Crazy. to uh, scream at him and run at him screaming. That sounds like quite the beautiful sight. But yeah, hopefully, hopefully next month then it won't rain so much and we'll be able to at least mm. have some out- outdoor bits and pieces. It's coming. Well, um, say that, me and me and Rack Moyd were talking today. I was about going to Liverpool if you went kept just for a trip away to Liverpool. When obviously things more open, obviously, because um, I love Liverpool. It's my favourite place to go because it's so cheap. There. It's so cheap and brilliant. Because obviously, I'm a massive Beatles fan. And basically, it was like my ex-girlfriend. This is the reason why we're ex now, pretty much. But um, I said to her, oh, we, I booked us a trip to go to Liverpool for the weekend because I bought a ticket to go to the Tate Modern Liverpool to go see this art she likes um, as a birthday treat. But I said, um, yeah, I booked us a trip to um, there's got tickets to the Tate Modern. I think she thought it'd be a nice like, go and see art, go see the docks and stuff like that. But it basically was Dave's big weekend. I just needed someone to come with me so I wasn't aware and it was just me going from pub to pub while she followed me. I was taking to like football pubs. She was getting quite upset. And um, but it's brilliantly cheap. So we went to one because I can't remember what the street's called now, but it's a famous one, one that the Beatles drank on. So the Calvin Club's there and all that. And um, you go in every bar is literally com- competition with each other to get people in. They have music playing at, like twelve o'clock in the afternoon, like bands playing. And um, we went to one bar. And we bought two, a glass per second each, two pound fifty a glass, and they're, they're quite generous glasses. So I paid a fiver and they gave me the bottle free and they said, we do a deal. Once you buy two glass per second, you get the rest of the bottle. It's just like sounds, insane so deals like that. Two for one, basically, isn't it? So yeah, yeah. Matthew Street is on. Matthew Street, that's it. 10 Matthew Street. Yeah, I want to go to Liverpool. I've never been there. I've been to Manchester. I had a couple of good nights there. Oh, um, yeah, I love but, Manchester. It's obviously but, Yeah, um, down the, um, is it the print works and stuff? Print works, yeah, and stuff. I went to the Stone Roses bar just outside of Manchester, sort of. Ah, I want to go to that. There's, it's, it's great. If, I if, think if, there's if, a if, guy if, that posts. I follow a group on Facebook, like Stone Roses or, 90s yeah. stuff and that guy that owns that bar posts on there a lot yeah no, if you if you ever like that scene because i went with a couple of friends but one of my friends just really isn't into that he's into like grime and like drum bass and he had the worst night of his life because he just didn't get any of it he was just stood, he was just stood up like, for fuck's sake why is everyone walking with their arms away from their body like Liam Gallagher? and everyone's like singing no, with their I'm hands up, behind I'm them up, i'm up for, everyone... for for an interesting night up that way or liverpool um do a bit it of quite... stuff it was quite funny because like um, we went out because I, I was the reason we the reason we went one it was Dave's big weekend away, um, and shortly after we broke up because I don't know if she could deal with, <laughs> with the spontaneous trips to Liverpool so I can get drunk. Um, cause she was a tea, she was pretty much tea table bless her. But um, anyway, we um went there and um, I, cause I said to her my bucket list was always go to the Cavern Club, the, the Cavern Club, and we got there and it was brilliant, fantastic. But um, this is how brilliant it is in Liverpool because um. We went. We were in the hotel. We went to the reception just to ask for like, directions to places. And um, she was like, "This really nice girl at the reception was like telling us like these really cool places to go." And um, she's like, "Yeah, it's, every, reason why I like it so much. They're like res- responsible people. The people that are working on reception desks in Liverpool, yeah. they judge everywhere by the price of beer. They were literally like, yeah, you go down this street. Yeah, it's two pound fifty for a pint there. If you want to pay a little bit more, but it is a nicer venue. It's three pounds twenty for a pint there. And um, she was telling us that, she goes, and I was like, oh, I just want to go to Cavern Club, especially. She goes, oh, yeah, but you have to pay for the nose for a drink in there, though, mind. I was like, oh, yeah, she goes, yeah, it's about £3.45 for a pint. I was like, that is brilliant <laughs> for Bristol prices. That is fantastic. That is pretty and, bad. You, what I saw about the Cavern Club recently, I can't, I want you to have the sound or anything. Yeah. YouTube might even be doing me for this. This is the Cavern. Um, so this is where the Beatles played. I've seen this video. Dudes, some dudes just get yeah, you fucking, bar. that's what it's Go like on. if you go in there. Yeah, I've seen Absolute that. bastard. What a piece like, of shit. What was he? What was he singing? The kid? He was like, he was like Bruce Springsteen or something. Like that. Something like that. But what? I mean, that is a fucking low. He could have killed it. <laughs> yeah, that's that's really dangerous. Yeah, because obviously, I, obviously, I don't know if we're showing this to people, but people listening, there's a guy in a cabin club doing a nice acoustic song cover, yeah. and this guy just walks on the stage and puts his arms around him, trips him up, and literally flips him in the air. Well, so he lands on his guitar. Picks him much... up. 
and then yeah, slams him down on his head basically. It's hard first as well, so that's like he's watching it in slow motion now. Wow. And fair play to the guy though, the guy who got thrown over, he jumped straight back up, went after him, didn't he? For... Got him. But I bet he, I bet he's in a lot of pain. Now, I, um... but... Hang on. I might just have to switch something. I'll have to wrap it up in a second anyway, but I'm going to switch my... Um... Yeah, fuck that. But you've got to jump up, because you, otherwise you look, you look weak. Yeah, you know exactly, I mean? yeah. You've got to get straight back up and go for it, even if you're in like, yeah. so much pain. <laughs> yeah. But you, you've, you've like, you can't show that, and then you've got to go outside and go... Oh! <laughs> <laughs> have you ever seen that picture where Noel Gallagher got pushed off stage in like, he, America? He really... Bad injured his ribs, didn't he? Yeah, they, yeah, because he landed on his guitar, and then you just see Liam Gallagher just classically just go up to the guy and just start swinging at him. We well, did the Friday night thing it where it's like, like when security come up, he's like, <laughs> yeah, because like, he he does a strut up to him, but yeah, when security, there, he, but yeah, he like dodges, he like dodges past his, not dodges past security, but he tries to like get past him so he could get punched him. But I, but yeah, it does look like he's doing that. Hold me back, hold me back. Yeah. <laughs> but he did get them from Pepper. Oh, yeah, that, 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 was, like, that's another one that could have died as well because when you, those stages are quite yeah. high. Yeah, that was like he landed like yeah, like Norgal said he landed like in the pit between the crowd and the stage. So it was like a big yeah. in America as well. It's like a big. So basically, it was like one of those halls. It's like you know when you see like things playing when they got they got like, a classical band at the bottom, like in a theatre. That's basically where he fell down there, and he landed like yeah, on the string on his guitar and like while his ribs. <laughs> There was, another, guy, there was another one because... more recently where someone picked someone up. I think a fan picked up like a female singer. I can't remember who the singer was. Maybe Lady Gaga or someone. Yeah. Um, did, oh, yeah. Did, you, did you see that? Like she had got a fan. On, it might not have been her, so I don't know. I'm just googling Lady Gaga. I did. Here, so. <laughs> but the, I did some see male it. fan. I did thought, see really. Yeah, 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 yeah. So some um, some fan, obviously. Let's make sure I haven't got any. Oh yeah, not just disabled serial killers. So some fan picks her up. Uh, fair play, and then he's dancing with her, and he f- he falls out. He drops her off the edge of the stage. <laughs> what? I never saw um, that. Yeah, I think that's mid fall. <laughs> yeah. Oh shit! Yeah. Fucking I imagine you just feel such a sweat when you do that. He just wanted to look cool and strong. He's like, maybe she'll fuck me if I show yeah. you how strong I am. <laughs> I did see something really funny the other day. Um, do you know the band? Well, we know we spoke about them, Sleaford Mods from Nottingham. Yeah. The two punk guy, where guy literally just presses like on his laptop and starts to like, call out, and his mate, and his, his mate just like very aggressive, like sort of really like John Cooper Clark style, like poetry sort of thing. But they did a thing once. There's, I'll send you the clip afterwards as well. Is um, they're outside Rough Trade in in um London, the big one. And they're doing like on the street performance on the pavement. So they've got the perimeter around them, like people giving a bit of space so they can perform. This drunk guy stood there, and then as they're starting the song, he's just there, like really drunk. And you can definitely tell he thinks he's like a wannabe musician. And he stood there drunk, like nodding his head to the music. And Stephen Mott guy's like doing his little dancing, does. And then he's about to go sing. And then literally, this guy just grabs a mic to take it so he can do something. And Stephen Mott literally grabs these guys, Stephen Mott grabs him properly like, up by the scruff of the neck, going mad at him. And this guy's like really confused and like, what, what's up? What's up? And he's like, everyone's like, fuck off. Get off. And it's like, you idiot! Yeah. They're clearly performing, and you go up and you think that you can grab the mic and start singing yourself. Yeah, it's what not. You if that, if that happened at an open mic, I, I, I it wouldn't be okay. Yeah. It wouldn't happen. It's not okay because it you don't you don't know what. It's only in a, even in a small pub, so you don't know if someone's going to come and hit you or something. That's some it. crazy person's going to get it. So you've got to like be really you aggressive. Like, um, thing, yeah. Because I leave, leave. Yeah, Stephen Mod literally grabs him and like pushes him away. And he keeps saying, like, back off, mate, fuck off, and stuff like that. Um, but I think you can see he's holding back, trying, because, like, if you ever see him in interviews, then they seem like nice blokes, but they do seem like quite angry men as well. Like, it takes doesn't take a lot to piss them off. Yeah. Like, they're very opinionated, sort of. Not in a bad way, but, like, but yeah, if everybody, like, it's just, what dickhead do you think? Like, you could just walk up and just start singing into their mic whilst they're performing. Sorry, a gig over here uh, that George did. Um, I can't, I, actually, yeah, I can't, I'm not even going to talk about who was running the gig. Um, rhymes with rhymes with uh, spigging um, spoons. All uh, right, yeah. I think I think I was. I think I was at this gig when someone from the crowd came up. No, you weren't. Um, um, George Willoughby, Kate Trevor was there, and a couple of other people um, like Sheep and Mash. But um, yeah, some local yokels thought it was hilarious to get up and do karaoke, and they can. I think it's. Um, I can't remember. I can't remember her name. 
Yeah. <clears throat> but see, they use a PowerPoint and music for part of their act. Yeah. Uh, and wears a wig. Um, yeah. But one of the local yokels came up and thought it was karaoke then and grabbed the microphone and started doing karaoke and was like, fuck's sake. Yeah, that's really funny, actually. That's funny, because that's a mistake. That's a genuine mistake. <laughs> <laughs> they were just hammered as well. But to be honest, even though, actually saying that, no, he's still a bit of a dick, because even in karaoke, there's etiquette. You've got to request a song. You've got to ask if they've got the song. You've got to write your name on the thing and wait for them to put up. But, um, that's what I want to do. Let's do a karaoke night, because I love a good karaoke night. I've not done one for years. What's your karaoke song? Actually, I'm quite keen to know that. I don't know. Honestly, I pro actually they. I don't know if it's still there, but when I first really went to Bristol it was years and years ago with a former job and it was like a conference, and we all went and found a karaoke bar in Bristol. It's up just off the tap, just off the um, harbour somewhere, up one of those streets where the Brazilian cafe is. Up one of them. It, yeah, it's a tiny door. Yeah. I don't know if yeah. it's still there. Yeah, it's still there. Yeah, it's still there. But you had a booth. And yeah. um, you pay for this thing for a certain amount of time, and then you press a button for beer. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, they still got there. Oh wow! Them. Okay, that was years yeah. ago. So I think I think that's, I might have duetted. I think I might have duetted something like "Welcome to the Jungle." This isn't even. <laughs> <laughs> my mind changes by my mood, but most of the time, I I always like to do um, I always like to do um, "Hit Me with a Rhythm Stick" by Ian Drury and the Blockheads. Because it's solid. Rocket Man, if it's the end of the night. That's always my end. Right. Um, I always get brain and then do um Prince, um, Purple Rain, um, which basically just sounds like the words was covering it. Um, yeah, oh, obviously the classic right. Oasis, uh, classic Oasis. But I want I tell you that's one thing. If we do do, do a karaoke night, and if anyone listen comes with us, you're more than welcome. Don't do the countless ring. When you do your song, then someone gets their chance, and then someone goes, "Oh, actually, no, I like this song as well." They try grabbing the mic so they can sing as well. Yeah, it's really it's your moment. Really pisses me off. You've waited for your moment. Fun, all for fun, but then there's etiquette. I want to look stupid on my own when I'm doing that, yeah. please. Um, I want to look stupid yeah. on my terms. Look, we're a quarter of the way through March. Things are, things are getting better, man. So um, we'll get out and have it. I've got to go in a second because one, I've got yeah. to eat, and two, I've got to be working on something. But yeah, I've got, yeah, I've shouldn't even done this really, well. but I thought, why not? Yeah. We can never schedule it. I've got to yeah. put one out with um, Joe Riley tomorrow, and then we'll put this out next oh, week. Yeah. We um, should hopefully be putting Joe Riley's one out soon as well with the horror pocket. We need to get you back on to that as well because we're bringing people back on. But we're choosing the film now. Me, George, and oh, me. Okay, George. yeah, no, I'm happy with that. So you give me, give me the film and then you go and watch it. Yeah. So um, I think uh, the problem is we keep saying like funny ones, but we we end up going like too funny. Like, well, not too funny, too ridiculous. Like 120 Days of Sodom. And I don't really want to watch that again, to be honest. Yeah. No, I'm, so I'm just keen. I, I love, I want to get back into watching horror in general. I watched a few watch last year when, when your podcast was coming out, actually. I watched Halloween, um, the new what the newer one a couple of years ago last year. Uh, the Rob Zombie. What's that? I watched that on Halloween actually. Ooh, how um, fitting. Do you know what? I didn't hate I didn't hate it. I didn't hate it. I don't know what you thought about it. Yeah. Um it's a bit weird, but you know, it was nice to see yeah. Jamie Lee Why? Curtis. And I to be honest, there's that bit at the beginning of that where there's a kid in a car. Yeah. And you think he'll be fine. <laughs> and then it's not. <laughs> but yeah, um so I think so I was talking about horror films. Um the guy who made The Witch and the guy who made like um, Hereditary and stuff like that, those two writers are joining up forces to make a long three hour long horror film, which I think would be hopefully would be good. Um, Jordan Peele's doing, there's a new Candyman coming out, which, because there's Jordan yeah. Peele behind it, it, actually looks good this one. Because like, the, the original, can, the, the first ever Candyman was good, after that it was all dog shit. After that. Um, so is that R and, R Esther, is it? That's it, yeah. And there's also, um, Oh, yes, yeah, I think he's. I think he is, but as like a side character. He's playing an old man or something. But um, there's maybe a new Exorcist coming out, like a remake of The Exorcist, which could go good, could go bad, could go worse. You just got to expect it to be bad, but then give it a chance and it might be better than you think. Well, I'm hoping they do what. Yeah, I'm hoping they did what they did with it, where they actually make it good. They don't. Because what they forget with the original Exorcist is like, um, the reason it was so creepy is because it was a lot of it was in daylight. It was, yeah, and it was those really long, slow scenes. It looked gritty. Mm. Yeah, I need, I need, I need to rewatch that again. So, so Arias has directed um, eleven films. I don't think they're all. Are they all horror? Oh, most of them are short. So, The Straight yeah. Mark Johnson's Munchausen, and then he made Midsummer, 
a hereditary midsummer and then there's a disappointment boulevard is that the new one i potentially i've not heard of that one to be honest so it's in pre-production so he's, he's directing it yeah. um nothing else nothing else about it uh, okay. yeah yeah, there's some, there's some good there's some good filmmakers around at the minute, so hopefully yeah. there'll be some good horror pumping out. Yeah, I'll watch them. Um, I've been watching the old classic Hammer horrors as well. Love them. Is amazing, but then it's just it's a mix. It's weird. It's very it, it's very confusing. It's very like very homoerotic, but also very erotic at the same time. Like it's like very camp people, but also tits as well. It's a bit... I remember when I was watching when I was about twelve, and then just enjoying the tits. Yeah. It's literally like okay. It's literally like the director's like, right? We think Dracula's looking a bit too gay. Also, let's get her tits out. Is there like, is there one like Dracula's Bride or something? Yeah, Dracula's Bride. Bride so Dracula. I think I, I think I saw that and got horned up like that. <laughs> <laughs> There's that one where um, I can't remember what it's called now, but she gets like the mask on her face and they hit her with a hammer, so it's supposed to be on her face, and she comes back as a witch, but she's like a saucy witch, and it's like even though she's got holes in her face, she's still like froth. Right. Yeah, Brides of Dracula. Might have been the one that I saw. But I, I um, yeah, I grew up watching them when I was a kid. They tried to bring Hammer back, didn't they, a few years ago? They did, but I think it just doesn't have the same sort of thing. It didn't they make the one with Daniel Radcliffe in it, wasn't it? Um, they did, what, Woman in Black? Yeah, was that not Hammer? It was a light, I definitely know it was a live show. Like a, I don't know, if, I, can, I have to look into that, to be honest. And I, th I think they were, they were thinking about trying to bring back Dracula and Frankenstein and all that, but they, they couldn't. I don't um, think it. I think it failed or something. I've been watching um Mark Gatiss when he did um like a couple of episodes of Dracula himself. It's obviously Mark Gatiss who does like League of Gentlemen and stuff. I've also. Does. I watched that over Christmas. It's good. I thought it was really good. I was really happy with it. I thought it was really part. well done. The, the last episode was a bit weird, but yeah. um, I think it still it still was good enough. It's good. It's got a dark humor. It's got like that yeah Mark Gatiss style humor, which is really good. And yeah. You've got the castle, the whole castle bit, which is cool. The nunnery stuff is great. Yeah. Where he just, like, like decapitates them all. I like the joke is, like, um, he's turned up, obviously, to talk about Dracula to the nuns, who turns out to be Van Helsing. And he's, like, all skinny and bald, lost all his hair, and he literally looks strained. And basically, like, he's saying, you sure you just didn't have sex with him? And basically, obviously, making, like, an AIDS joke. <laughs> <laughs> you sure you just didn't have sex with him? And he's like, no, he trained me. Yeah, then they, then they get it was really well done where he comes off the ship into Dover and then it's like modern day. That was really, really well yeah, done. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, big fan of that. They reckon they're making more, don't they? Even though yeah, it seems to they, end. Well, I think Mark Gates, I don't know if I, I misheard this, but he said he wants to do up, he wants to do like a Frankenstein one now, then do what Hammer Horror did. Do a Dracula v Frank or Dracula v no, sorry, Frankenstein v Wolfman sort of thing. Like that could, could be interesting. It, it was it was definitely definitely good. Even the stuff on the ship was really good as well. Mm, yeah. That was good. Um, that was actually that's a good question we've been thinking. Um, someone asked me, and I thought it was a really good question. If you could go back in time at any point, what would happen is you go back into a cinema at any point in the time, but you forget about the film. Which film would you go back to just to watch like the shock bit, like the bit, just to witness it for the first time when no one else knows what's going to happen either? Oh, um, that's a good question. What horror film? We could be any to be honest, but usually it's a horror film. But like I said it was most shocking. Could be any film to be honest. At the time, I mean, what are the classic? I mean, obviously, Exorcist is probably one of the. I yeah, I, I said I go Exorcist in America. Though I want to watch it in America to watch them get mad. There's all people screaming in the cinemas and having heart attacks and stuff, right? Yeah, like people having seizures and stuff. Like that. I mean, it's I hard think... to imagine the context where there's nothing else like it. Hmm. Um, yeah, I can't think of I can't think of much else in terms of out on that horror. I think Exorcist would have to be the one. Um, I think Ex I think for me it was like definitely the Exorcist because I wanted to see how people if people were having heart attacks. But there was like um the first ever Phantom of the Opera when it was actually a silent movie. You know, when they like talk but you can't hear a voice that comes up. But the first time they actually show the the, the count's face after they take away the mask. But even for like those times that was fucking scary. They said the actress fainted when they first showed her through it. Yeah, and it still to this day still was creepy. And this, these were the times where if you show someone your ankle, they call you a whore. So I quite like to be in the cinema then to see that for the first time, see how people reacted to that. Your ankle showing hussy. Yeah. I'll see um, Elvis dancing. Yeah. I was going to say Oasis. No, Stone Roses. Uh, Spike Lee. I know that's not a film, but I would like to go to Spike Lee. That's a classic. Yeah. And there's, it's a whole thing where lots of people say they, they were there and they can't have all been there. Yeah, they can't. Um, but apparently it was one of the worst gigs ever because you couldn't even hear 
Mm, so and Noel Gallagher talked about it because they were all there. And you yeah. can't even you couldn't even hear the sound because they fucked up the sound. It was outside. It was windy. Yeah. They weren't really used to putting on gigs like that. The, the ground was like a swamp. That's why you didn't see any pitch or footage of it because it was awful. <laughs> but, um, I guess I imagine the energy in the crowd was quite good. But, um... There's one. There's literally one clip you can find someone on YouTube of Stone Roses' performance by Kind for like five seconds, and the quality does sound shit. Yeah, I know it's all VHS and stuff like that. But... It's hard to understand what you, if you're out of the crowd and they haven't managed the sound right, and a lot of the sound can get taken. Not these days, but I remember back in the day I was going to gigs and some of the sound would get taken around the wind and stuff, so you, it would come in waves. Um, but I saw them at um, Finsbury Park when they yeah. did their brief comeback. Oh, yeah, they bought, they released one song which was quite alright, but it was just them going oh for a while. They released they released two singles almost back to back, and the yeah. first one was the first one was pretty cool. But that that um they were supposed to do an album, then they all fell out of each other again. Yeah, sure. Well, I think Ian Brown's quite a difficult man to sort of. He's he's he was supposed to be doing a festival this year, and he's dropped out of it because he says he doesn't want to go there. If you have to have a vaccine to get there. Yeah, he's, he's gone. Very, he's gone very like anti-vax, anti-mask, isn't he? Where's that? Um, do you remember Steve Jones, the Welsh TV show, TV host? Yeah. He's on T4. There's one where he's got on T4, he talks Ian Brown. And um, Ian Brown, he goes, What's this you do? He goes, I hear you do this. And he's like, Oh, yeah, it's probably Ian Brown. Oh, it's the Brazilian. That's a terrible impression. But he's like, Oh, it's the Brazilian form of fight dancing where you're dancing, but you fight. And then Steve Jones goes, Oh, so what What should we go? What's was it then? Should you do the hokey cokey? You do a few punches? He goes, Do a fucking go outside and I'll show you what it's like. The proper, like, Starting him, Steve Jones. Like, yeah, I remember joke. that actually. Yeah, it's just a joke, mate. It was just a joke. Oh, oh, show, yeah. He went yeah, to prison for a little while, didn't he, Ian Brown? Did he? I think so. I think I remember an interview. No, quick look. I thought we'd go in a sec, but um, Ian Brown. Yeah. I think he went in for like a few months or a month. Um, oh, I've just got prisoner of access man come up. Someone prison. Uh, yeah. I keep forgetting he's in that as well. Two months in prison for threatening behaviour on a plane. Um, at 2000 so I remember reading like a Q magazine and he, he come out and he goes all, he goes, all, all I did in there was push ups man for two months every day I'm ripped push ups every day man yeah so is everyone else making an hour hot in that everyone else is doing it even you're not special I think it was ever since the day they said he looks like a little chimp that's when it, I can't he's very, he is very chimp like well I say he, he had the monkey business song didn't he monkey yeah. business Monkey business. Um, I love Stone Roses, but Ian Brown does ruffle me up a few. Like, he's just he's, he's, he seems like that old guy in a pub who just doesn't shut up about his views and opinions until everyone's heard it. And you're like, all right, okay, now Ian, let's take you away. He's a, he's a legend, legend in his own right, but yeah, it would be it probably would be annoying. <laughs> like, I've seen him go he's on Twitter, really anti anti mask and all yeah. that. As well. He's like, don't fuck, I'm, I'm a name, not a number. Yeah, it's like. No one's telling you to do that. It's just asking you to put a mask on the end. This isn't <laughs> this isn't Thatcher's Britain anymore. But um, I think I just like, I like Manny too much. And Manny's a legend. I've met him. Manny's I'm, chill. I've met him. He's outside. Party. Literally, it was during when we went to watch him the Etihad Stadium. We went to watch Stone Rose the Etihad, and we're walking around literally a couple of hours before the get before like the even the doors open. So we're walking around Manchester, and Manny's just sat outside a bar. I just literally went with his mate. We sat down. We had a photo. I, I unfortunately I can't. I got to try to find a photo of it. We make off of him, but yeah, he just sat and chatted to us for a bit, and then he's just like, "I'll see you at the gig, yeah." And he's like, "Sound, oh bless him." That's awesome, yeah, because all, all that lot's still pretty chill. Like, I, I um, I missed their gig, but I was at a festival in Portsmouth. Yeah, Happy Mondays were there, and I walked past Bez and his missus. Mm. So like, we just in the, I was just in the crowd, and this guy in the jean jacket is after their gig. He was just walking through the crowd, mm. and I turned around, I was like, "Was Bez?" <laughs> I think but it was one of those where he was too. By the time I noticed him, he was yeah. too far away through the crowd. That's what happened to my, my mate when he was um, in Glastonbury watching um, The Who a couple of years ago um, when Libertines came on, did a surprise reunion show there because um, when, right, Dave yeah. Grohl, when Dave Grohl couldn't do Foo Fighters, so Franz Machine had to bump back up to the top. And so Libertines just turned up and did the uh, Franz Machine set. But my mate said he was watching um, The Who in the crowd and he goes, and Pete Dock, he just literally just walked past him casually. My mate said it wasn't until he walked after him like, and he was like a good couple of yards away from that, he realised it was him. But it's like you probably- do. They're He's probably trying to scalp some skag yeah. before the game. I know this but you know Pete Doherty's there when he's there, because he's like, he's like seven foot. He's not like... A, he's a master, he looks like a ghoul. Yeah. And he, he just <laughs> off his tits all the time, yeah. whilst every year claiming to not be taking drugs anymore. I, li- I like that, yeah. It's like, um, his last... I don't take drugs anymore, man. <laughs> what happened last time in his last Libertines tour in Paris, didn't they? He got 
done for drug buying coke off the streets, bless him. Yeah. And then he got released and he went for celebration and getting released from the police and he got a fight with someone in a pub and got arrested again. Oh, Pete. He's totally it, changed. But it's, uh, it's catching up with him, I think. But yeah, he's trying I, to be a rock star, that's it. I tell you what, I actually was watching this random daytime TV show and he turned up on it. Like it was like a one for like old people to watch and he just turned up. Um it was like this thing where it's a Sam Michael comedian suggested to me, it's brilliant, it's called For Love and Money. It's on eleven AM in the morning, daytime is about um they're they're investigating people that have been conned by like romance con artists, like on Tinder, like I need money to get into my country, which it's always old people, bless them. Yeah. Who've got this young Nigerian guy who's like, Oh, I got two hundred kilos of gold, I need to uh I need 10 grand to get it out of the bank in Nigeria, blah, blah. But um, I'll end it on this story. So um, this um, woman said she lived she lived up near um, Margate and she gave this guy who was maybe working on an oil rig, coming back with millions of pounds after he finishes his contract. He goes, I've given him all my money. I've um, took out loans. I've took out, I can't, the bank won't let me take any more money out because they don't trust I could be, because I keep taking too much money out. Um, I can't, I can't give any, my cr- uh, grandkids any Christmas money and stuff like that. Because she was walking down the street and then she didn't realise Pete Doherty was a neighbour. He was just walking down the street in his own little world. And he apparently waved hello to her and she waved back. And uh, she said he was very friendly, very, very, like, very enthusiastic. I was like, yeah, I think that's what Skag does. It does turn you into quite a Hello. social person. That's why the homeless people always approach you. like, yeah, it's quite keen to talk to you. Yeah, my, my mate saw him in South End as well. He lives there, right? Yeah, that's in the Margate sort of way. Yeah, Margate. So yeah, they, they went over there and saw him just wandering down the street as well when he was fat the other year. Yeah, when he actually ate the breakfast. <laughs> but, um, yeah, so 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 she started crying for Pete Doherty. So he took her into his house for a cup of tea, and then she she said finally she could tell what's up, someone what's happened because she didn't know who he was. Well, she knew who he was famous, but she didn't know he wasn't a family member. And he finally just left the room and just turned up with like a massive wad of cash and just gave her the twelve thousand pounds. I said, there you go, here's your money back. He was just don't do it again. And I was like. And was like, oh, God bless him and stuff. I was like, yeah, but you don't... I, I love Pete Doherty. I always do. Question where that money came from. But who knows? Yeah, I mean, he's probably got his own heroin business going on as well. <laughs> well, um, I'm... Again, I'll, I'll end this on this bit, actually. I remember when um, Libertines came back together and they were supposed to do um the Roundhouse in Camden. No, the well, big venue in Camden. Yeah. But, um, Pete Doherty just didn't turn up. He literally just wasn't there. And then some guy in Portsmouth or something like that was like, I've just given... um room service to this guy it was just Pete Doherty in a dressing gown waving but apparently he said he got to Camden and he said he just couldn't be in there because too many people would turn up with drugs for him not like he wasn't asking for a big people oh Pete what's up with this and, like, and he was like yeah I can't be here yeah. first yeah so, oh, well, there's, there's, us with the, there's us with the opposite problem tough to, it was tough to turn down I tell, I've been in bars off of Oxford Street years ago and some yeah. random people just offered coke and stuff just yeah. random you're having a piss at your own and they're like do you want some coke mate <laughs> Sure. What, happened, what happened to me in Cardiff last time I was in Cardiff? Um, that pub opposite the oh, it's all right on the, the main, you know, Long Street by the train station. Yeah, yeah. it's like at the Welsh Rugby. It's right next to the stadium. It's like quite heavy, like a rocky pub. You go and there's a picture of like the Welsh Rugby players on the wall. It's quite weird. It's like the Queen's Vault or something like that. Yeah, we talked about four years of Queen's Vault. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's right by the stadium. And I went with my friend Steph because she lives in Lish Bang in the city centre. And I went for a piss, and then it's like this is about twelve in the afternoon. And this Australian guy who's kind of zooming I'm not going to do that. I can't do an Australian accent. Oh, have you got any drugs, mate? And I was like, um, no. And he goes, why the fuck not? And I was like, because it's 12 o'clock in the afternoon, you bastard. What, what a mess we are. Yeah. What a mess we are. I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have to wrap it up. Yeah, that's fine, mate. I've got, I have got some shit to do and I'm getting tired. And I've got to yeah, eat. Um, but fair. thanks for coming on and we will get together. Well, hopefully we can do something next month. Even yeah, if it's crossed. If the weather's nice one weekend, I'll come over and... Um, Thanks for I'll come down Cardiff as well. Yeah, we'll find a little bit of grass. <laughs> sit on it. Car- I guess we should get people to come to Cardiff. Instead of getting you to come all the way down here, we should come down to you one time. I'm happy with that one time, definitely. I'll be here for a few more months. Yeah, um, there will be. And then, uh, be. yeah, comedy will be back in the summer and it will be fun. Yay. And uh, so we're working on to try and put a couple of things on, but we've got to try and yeah. find a place, places to do it. We think we might have a way up somewhere for June. We're looking for somewhere in May, um, in Bristol, but we've got to find, we've got to find somewhere that's outside and that's probably on private land rather than a park. Yeah. Okay. You don't want people to turn up. Like, what you want people to turn up? You don't want people walking past me. Like, eh. so we're gonna put, we're gonna put the little feelers out there. Whether you know, whatever. We'll, we'll get onto it. Tell you about that in a bit. But yeah, I'm gonna yeah. die, so I'm gonna have to go. Yeah, good man. Um, and then, yeah, hopefully we'll be having a beer soon. Yay.
All right, don't kill any kids or long, wrong and strong men. Yeah, vice versa, don't force any jam donuts down their throats. I'll try not to force anything down anyone's throat. Right, thanks, okay. Dave. Cheers, mate. Thanks, Bye. Bye.